friends, Nibs again. <clears throat> on the garage, doing a little bit of goofing around today. And uh, I wanted to do another head-to-head -head challenge for you guys. And uh, I think this one will be a pretty fair and close matchup. Um, both are pretty fair, fairly new arrivals to the garage. <clears throat> the first one here is my Snow Peak Model SP500. This is a brake barrel. 22 caliber pistol and uh, Springer and we are going to be putting it head to head up against my Crossman 2240 uh, pretty much uh, this is a 22 caliber CO2 pistol uh, they are pretty closely matched as far as performance goes and trigger pull weight and things like that neither one have you know a terrific trigger they're not terrible triggers on either one but uh, <clears throat> this one has a Bushnell red dot, uh, tube type red dot on it, and a very nice little scope or, or sight, whatever you want to call it, and uh, has some airgun capital accessories on here, silencer and uh, scope mount and things like that, but uh, pretty much stock as far as <clears throat> the as far as the setup goes, um, the 2240 actually is the newest, I believe, the newer, no, maybe the SP500. I believe the SP500 actually is. I was just looking up there at the boxes from them up on top of my uh, cabinet, and uh, the SP500 boxes are on top of the Crossman boxes, so <clears throat> it must be the Snow Peak is the newer one. But... Uh, I have uh, mounted up my GoTar 2 MOA red dot on the Snow Peak, which is kind of funny because the <laughs> red dot costs like twice as much as the, the actual pistol goes. But we're going to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> test these with some nice budget friendly pellets. I've got these Crossman Premier Hollow Points, 22 caliber, 14.3 grain. Everybody asks what the distance is I'm shooting. I'm shooting 21 feet across the garage here. That's all I got. But I am using these little tiny targets, um, which uh, have scoring rings starting at a dot in the center, which is 10 out to 3 on the outside. So if you took this and extrapolated it out to a, a larger target that you would use it like 50 feet or whatever um, you know these are pretty comparable <clears throat> and give you a pretty good idea even though with limited range as long as I can keep them within that black scoring circle I'm doing pretty good so <clears throat> that is totally up to me I did have a couple extra cups of coffee this morning so I am a not the most steady of hand this morning but uh Let's go ahead and see what we can do. This uh, this go tar is a fantastic little little sight. All right. I'm still getting just a little tiny bit of dieseling from the construction uh, lubricant on the snow peak so hasn't fully broken in yet uh, I've put a lot more rounds through my 177 snow peak I'm not sure why it just just happens that I have but uh, this one's a fine shooting gun too the other one, I did trigger work on both of these, and the other one ended up with a much nicer trigger. I don't know why, and this one's not terrible, like I said, but it's the other one is a much nicer trigger on the 177 version. I might need to pull this guy apart and just see if I can do any any little bit more to it. It's got a, it's it's kind of stiff. And then it just and then it breaks. So Oh that one 
that's not going to help. <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about. The, uh, the trigger is just stiff. All right. Well, that one looks like it stayed in scoring, though, so. <clears throat> All right. I think the uh, I think the crossman might have an advantage here now. It's uh, definitely a little bit better of a trigger pull. Ooh. Definitely quieter. <laughs> For the budget, for the budget friendly, uh, both of these are very good choices. I did do the uh, spring crush mod for the trigger on this one too. That was, what was that, three? This is four. So the Made the trigger a lot nicer on this one, too. Boy, that red dot is bouncing. Okay, one more. Let's see what we can do. I'm not sure. I can't really see the impacts. We did have a zero on the uh, snow peak, so that's probably not going to help things out, but uh, I'll add those up and I'll be right back with you. Alrighty, folks. Well, <laughs> you're probably not going to believe this, but uh, we did not have a tie, but the snow peak actually ended up winning this even with getting one zero. Um, <clears throat> the Crossman... Uh, I grouped them all up really high here, but I never really got one down low in and got a decent score with it. So I ended up with a uh, 23, which is not terrible for these little tiny bullseyes. But the even with this zero over here, I had several down here that were sevens and eights and a, and a six <clears throat> and one three. And I ended up with a score of 24 with the snow peak. So... Uh, surprising results even with a zero there but uh, there you go the snow peak sp 500 22 caliber brake barrel takes a head-to-head -head challenge out here in the garage these both of these are great uh, budget friendly even without all the accessories you can uh, have a lot of fun with these I might uh, switch them all back to open sights and see what we can do with uh, open sights on there. But there you go. There is the head-to-head -head challenge between the Snow Peak SP500 and the Crossman 2240. Hope you enjoyed the video. Till next time, have a great day.